On my way here tonight, I was reminded of an old joke. Uh, one guy says to another guy, did you know my brother lives in Alaska? And the second guy says, gnome. And the first guy says, Otta, he's my brother. Well, that ties into an interesting story. I, I recently had dinner with Woody in uh, New York City at Elaine's, and uh, it was fun. It was. We each had a glass of wine. And boy, did we get dizzy. And then Cavett stopped by and started mixing up the spelling of big words. And we got laughing. And then we talked about Bergman and the Knicks. And then at one point, I, I said to Woody, I said, have you seen the colorized version of It's a Wonderful Life? Doesn't it look super? And he said to me, you like that? And then he made me realize how bad it is to do that kind of stuff. And I was reminded of the old joke. I should have known better. And then Woody turned to me, and this is very important because it ties into the theme of tonight's show. And, and he started putting down Hollywood, calling it a cultural wasteland. And I must admit, I took that rather personally because he was talking about my new hometown. And uh, I would have said something too, except that Cabot made an anagram out of the word Hollywood and we just <laughs> started laughing again. But when I got home, I, I made a pledge to myself that the next television show that I did was going to be a celebration of Hollywood, done with style and class and proving to Woody once and for all that you can do art in this town. And you know something? I think I did it. Hollywood, land of faith. On the list, let's make a list of all who came to Hollywood. But then the talkies came in and swept them under the rug And all they really could do is just sit back and show rug As they watch Gabo and Gable and Cooper and Peck He was the meat cheese, a guy with the neck And then the mumblers came in and took the style Scene like Marlon Brando, Martha Hire, and the late Steve McQueen. He was terrific. Now we've got ring wild and seedy, rat pack and galore, Rod Taylor, Chef no, and so many more. To tell the true story of my love affair with Hollywood, we have to go back to the very beginning. I was like any other kid growing up. I liked hamburgers and french fries and gravy on those french fries and going to the movies every Saturday afternoon. Even as a teenager, I looked forward to nothing more than the smell of popcorn smothered in butter and that 24 ounce bottle of Coke I bring from home. This is the Westdale Theater where I spent all those wonderful Saturday afternoons as a kid. Sure, it's gone through some changes, but it still has that same familiar smell. Although there is a new aroma that I can't quite put my finger on and wouldn't want to. 
<clears throat> you know, it's funny. When people refer to me as a genius or a brilliant clown master, I have to say, with all due respect, family circle, I don't see it. Because when I think of a genius, okay, only one man comes to mind. A man I used to watch every Saturday afternoon. A man who inspired me to pack my bags, move to Hollywood, and make a grab for that elusive brass ring called success. Hey, look what I found. <laughs> and that man was the legendary dancer's dancer himself, Mr. Dale O'Day. His vitality and pizzazz earmarked every performance, as is so clearly evident in the classic Man in the Moon. Don't you see? I'm in a panic. For the man who made me forgot to paint me. And I'm afraid if it rains, all my boards will walk. Gee, that is a problem. I'm on my way to see the man in the moon. I'm going to ask him for an assortment of Lena Horne records. And maybe he can give you some paint. What an idea. The man in the moon. Oh, the man in the moon. I've only heard about the man in the moon. His powers can turn tin into gold, straw into flax and wheat. How sweet for oh, the man in the moon. I've only dreamed about the man in the moon. Now I'm asking him for a paint, if you please. I hope he's not made of cheese. But just in case, I'm bringing along some soda crackers and a cheese grater. At least I'll be nutritionally fortified. Yeah! Although critically panned as a third-rate Wizard of Oz, Dale O'Day became an overnight sensation. But like most overnight sensations, O'Day spent years in vaudeville including the brief teaming with his sister, Baby Estelle O'Day, who now lives in Buffalo with her nine children. My brother Dale was what they called a working all -all. That was the term that they used. He changed his dance belt seven times a day for a reason. Trust me on that one. Randy, stop that banging up there! I would like to pass her to last one more year till we get our security deposit back. Thank you very much. Papa would always say to me, he'd say, Estelle, you're a talker. Dale is a doer. And I'd say to him, well, to hell with you if that what you think of me, you wrinkled old son of a bitch. Because if you... Stop on! By the way, you and Lena, and you know that young man. Shut up, Craig. I'm talking to Stefan. Shut up, dude. Shut up. Shut up. You shut your lips. Shut up. <laughs> no, but Dale was what they call a working all. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Brain freeze. Brain freeze. One of the first things I did when I arrived in Hollywood was to come here and visit the grave of Dale O'Day. Hi, Dale. And I re remember, <clears throat> I remember taking a book. <clears throat> I said I wasn't gonna cry and I'm not. <laughs> Keep rolling the film. Tape? What do you mean it's tape? Why? What do you mean we couldn't afford film? Why does Woody always get to use film? Anyway, I remember taking a bouquet of flowers from that grave over here and placing it by Dale's name and reflecting on his tragic and untimely death. It was... Uh a scene 
from his second and uncompleted last film, The Red Slip-Ons. And what my brother Dale wanted was his character to dance up the wall and then on the ceiling in jubilation. A scene that Fred Astaire stole two years later, thank you. Although Fred did have the good sense to nail down the furniture, which Dale did not. <laughs> when they rotated the room, Dale was crushed on the first day. <laughs> I don't even think my brother Dale knew what squashed him. I wish I had a button that was made of magic to push so that my brother Dale would be with me now. And I would say to him, I miss you, big brother. Can I ride on your shoulders? <laughs> ah. You know, it's interesting. People are always asking me, now that I've become this Hollywood celebrity, what do I do with all the money I make? Yeah, right. Believe me, it goes. <laughs> Try $1,500 a month for a private trainer. Ouch! Geez, Leon, what are you doing? <laughs> Sorry, but that hurt. Also, there's... Ouch! Okay, you know what? Bye. But I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. I couldn't always afford a private trainer. Oh, God, I remember those early days when I was bussing tables at Schwab's and thinking... <laughs> oh, sorry, Marty. But I was one of the lucky ones. However, there are thousands of struggling actors in Hollywood that aren't quite as lucky. Each morning, I start my day off walking my St. Bernard and best friend, Durbingo. Derbingo depends on me for sustenance, and I on him for companionship to help pass the lonelier hours while I wait for my big break to arrive. The answering machine is a vital necessity to any actor. Missed phone calls mean missed opportunities, and every actor knows that opportunities are few and far between. Please leave your name. After the sound of the beep. This is ACA, one of the most powerful talent agencies in Hollywood. Without an agent, an actor holds little hope of achieving film work. Lawrence has no agent, but he is hopeful. Hi, Lo. I'm Lawrence Orbach. I'm Alex. Hi, Alex. I'm here to see Miss Weiss. Do you have an appointment? Yes. Well, let's see. No. Oh, well, if you don't have an appointment, yes. then you... You do or you don't? No. I have pictures, Alex. I'm pumping gas. Yes, I see. I'm just, um, thinking about Europe. Uh -huh. I'm about to play a sport with a racket. Yes, it's tough. For actors it's very tough for actors uh, especially when you're starting out and you don't have agents but uh, but Hollywood is it's, it's a tough town and it's, it's very hard to succeed here you have to be connected 
it depends on uh, whom you are seen with, what you... Connie, is this uh, tuna fish? I want a chicken. Uh, this is tuna fish. Uh, oh, that's not very nice of you. I'll take it back. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Well, no, forget it. Forget, forget, forget it. Forget it, Connie. I shouldn't be eating. I'm just going to nibble. I'm just going to eat the bread. Um, do you know how well connected I am? I bawled everyone at Paramount. I bawled everyone at Columbia. I... Uh, Connie, Connie, who else have I bawled? Did you mention everybody at Time Warner? Time Warner. When our camera followed Lawrence back to his apartment, we were witness to an unfortunate event. His eviction for non-payment of eight months back rent. You spend money on answering service machines. Yes. Photographs, acting classes, trade publications, hand modeling classes. <laughs> and yet you have no money to pay the rent. But you don't seem phased at all. You, you must really feel confident you're going to make it. Are you going to make it? Make what? In show business. Are you going to make it in show business? Yes. Make what? This is Ubi, the hottest and the hippest bistro in Hollywood. We're not only celebrities, but power brokers from every major studio do their dining and their dealing. Ooh, by the way, is a French word. And that French word stands for where? The bald guy from Night Court. What's his name? Get a shot. Pretty bad. <laughs> Can you believe that head of his? See, it just goes to prove you never know who you're going to see in Hollywood. You know who that was? That was uh, uh, the guy from Love Boat, Fred. What's his name? Uh, he's a bartender. What's his name? You know, you know the guy I mean? Fred? He became a congressman from some state. In this, well, anyway, you know, obviously I am not very good at spotting celebrities. But there are two friends of mine who are brilliant at spotting celebrities. And they just happen to be dining at Ooze tonight. From the Hollywood Tribune, gossip columnist Troy Soren, and from the Hollywood Fine Arts Dispatch, Antoninus Dementabella. Thank you, Mark. Well, as you can see, we've just finished our appetizers, and they were sensationally luscious. Mine was um, a little salty, and I think the butter has turned. Smell that. Hmm. Smells familiar. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to say when and where. <laughs> but here we are at Ooze, and very excited to be here for the movers and shakers are mm -hmm. bopping and hopping, and stars galore, galore. Oh, they're just packing the rafters here, and, and they're coming, and they're going, and it's, well, it's just very exciting. I know. bet you wish you'd brought your telescope. Well, who says I didn't? <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of a star, one of my favorites, Miss Lisa Hartman has just entered. Oh, so she has. With a party of 12. Now, isn't that interesting, Antoninus? Well, that is rather odd. You know, Lisa normally travels with, what, two or three different people? Three tops. So seeing her in a group of 12, to me, represents a woman who is in some sort of turmoil or stress. It's very, very odd for her. Hmm. I'm not saying she is, but I'm not saying she isn't, well, if that is, makes any sense it's at all. A, it is a cry for help. You know, it's like a little kitten rolling down a hill and squeaking. Yes. Yeah. Or a bird who's, who's somehow gotten in a bag and someone set fire to the bag and just there's that last bit of panic. Or mm -hmm. maybe she, it's just a birthday party. Mm -hmm. I think Miss Lisa Hartman is glamorous. And I'll tell you why. She is always well coiffed. Mm -hmm. And also her hair looks beautiful. Well, anyway. But stars, 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 stars. You cannot see enough stars at Ooze. No, no. And no. I think that what's wonderful about Ooze is that it's consistent because the movers and the shakers... The power brokers are here, are here, mm -hmm. and they're talking deals, mm -hmm. and celebrities are saying, hey, I would like to be seen, mm -hmm. and uh, agents are saying, hey, I'm seeing you, mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. and casting agents are saying, oh, well, casting agents are saying, are you being seen by me, or am I seeing you? Right, mm -hmm. and publicists are saying, are we now seeing you as you really are? Exactly. 
So as you can see, it's the panoply, it's the cornucopia, if you will, of show business in one restaurant or a nice spot. Absolutely, and I think it's true. Others have said it, I'll say it again. Mm -hmm. Oh, Nancy oh, Dusso. Nancy Dusso. Mm -hmm. She's not been around much, very much at all. What did yeah. I just say? I don't know. Are we? Are these going to our heads? I am getting loop to loop loop. Well, number three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, How's Hildy? Hildy's fine. Hildy is my wife, and we have four wonderful, wonderful boys. Mm -hmm. The eldest is Timothy. Then mm -hmm. there's Craig. Then there's mm -hmm. Leon. Then there's Marshall. And, and my wife is Denitra, and I have one boy who's just my. Favorite mm -hmm. little boy who isn't my own boy. It's true, but you know, it's funny. His name is Pendarvis. And he said something to me the other day. He said, Papa, what's a wood burning tool? And you know, I didn't really know what to say. I mean, I did, and I could speak English, but I didn't know how to explain. So we went down to my shop where there's, you know, a couple of tools. See, I have a, a crescent wrench and a pair of tweezers. And I said, Well, how do I explain to you? And I never did. That's too bad. You know, Kim Stanley phoned a friend of mine, and she said a very interesting thing about acting. I wish I could remember what it was. Mm. You know something? I was in here not two nights ago, and in the corner was Tova Borgnine, and she was wrestling with a scallop the size of a basketball. And I came over to her table, and I said, you know something? Despite what they say about you, you have you've become a lady. Hello. Hello. This was too salty. Really? And that's not a complaint. But it, it it's really well, it's, just for... It's more of a lifestyle sort of choice. No, I Mine mean, was perfect, yeah. however. Can I hold on to this? You sure can. And, Thanks. I'll, and I'll take this. All right. I'll be right back with you. <laughs> they, never, they never get that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Anyhow. When you think of Hollywood... And you think of the big stars today, okay? Mm -hmm. You have people like Judd Nelson. Well, he's very talented, yes. and he has that whole swoosh of hair that's uh -huh. a statement. Well, there's also a cynicism and a sadness about. Here you go, gentlemen. Oh, thank you. Oh, that oh, ooh, there is no shellfish in there, is there? No, ma'am. Good, mm. because I. Mmm. Mmm. This is good. Here we go. Right. Take it. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very Has much. That turned. Oh, what does it smell like to you? <laughs> that smells like Russ Tamblin's outerwear. <laughs> oh, but that's good. Well, that's well good. listen, we're not going to nibble this food down in front of you. No, that, because we need our privacy. Do we so not? So please go away. Just get away from us now. Imm immediatemente. No. All right. And when we come back, we're going to talk about all kinds of things. We're going to see stars by the bushel. Yes, they're all going to be here. Yakov mm -hmm. Shmurnov, the Russian comedian. Is the, the Russian but... enemy. No. <laughs> well, that's old thinking. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and when we come back, we're going to talk about who has had a facelift. <laughs> you would not dare. I might. <laughs> <laughs> I think in this town in particular, Plastic surgery is a necessary tool. It could not only add 10 years to a star's career, which I think is super, but it can make you be who you want to be, finally. So few people are. <coughs> now, Myrna here has been working for me for how long, dear? Six years? That's right, Doctor. And she has had work done. How old are you now, Myrna? I'm 38, Doctor. Next year is the big Jack Benny birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but you look great. Let me just feel this. Uh, see, now that seems a little bit loose. Let me try that coin test of mine. Good Lord, that should have bounced a lot farther than that. You're definitely due for another little nip. When are you slated? A week Wednesday. Luckily for Myrna, she works here, so she gets a rate. Although not much of one. <laughs> Bye, Doctor. Michael, are you leaving? Yes, I have to go screen Butterfield AIDS. Very good, then. And I can't tell you how pleased I am with this new chin. Oh, well, thank you. Remember to call me next Wednesday and we'll discuss that whole forehead area. No reason it has to look that manly. Great kid. <clears throat> At any rate, I feel 
that we, in this office, in our own way, are making a contribution to Hollywood. I'm just not that sure how. <gasps> That's odd. What happened? <laughs> Look, Willie Shoemaker. <laughs> I don't know. He's, he's lifted. He's like a <coughs> trampoline or something. Oh, I volunteer. <laughs> oh, I bet you do. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my gosh in heaven, Miss Liza Minnelli. Oh, oh, I'm going over. No, you are not. 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 She's wonderful. I'll tell you why. Why? Going over. Who's she sitting with? Who's she sitting with? Marjo, her husband. Mm hmm. Marjo? She married Marjo? Marjo. You stop it. You know, I'll, you want to put an ice cube down your the back of that thing? Would you? No, I can't. No, she's married to Mark Jarrow, who's a wonderful sculptor. And they found <laughs> a... <laughs> well, while the boys regain their composure, let's go live to the Wiltern Theater, where Las Vegas' brightest star is performing to benefit the completion of the F. Murray Abraham Wing of the Bel Air Preschool. He's a man who is more than just the son of the late legendary singer Jackie Rogers Sr. He's also one of my best friends in the whole world. Here with the story of the Hollywood screenwriter, please welcome Jackie Rogers Jr. Uh, it's not your sense. Aren't you sweet? Hi, Mama. Thank you, Martin, for those kind, kind words. Interesting story. Getting some plaque removed from teeth that had been bonded, which is not supposed to happen, by the way, but that's a whole nother story. And this cute little dental assistant with magnificent hooters says to me, Mr. Jackie Rogers, Jr., sir, how exactly does a film get made? Well, it got me a thinking. How does a film get made? So I phoned me buddy in crime, Dr. Eugene Landy, and in two hours, truth. He writes this musical thesis and returns it to my doorstep. So for Denise, the dental assistant, for you, the audience, and for my late father, the legendary performer Jackie Rogers Sr., who was such a fan of the Fletch novels but never had the where for all to bring them to the screen, more power to you, Mr. Chase. Capiche. Idea, idea, script is doing me. Idea, Jackie needs an idea. Who here needs some air? I do. Look at the neighbor's pit bull, if only he could talk. Idea, he thinks I have an idea. A vision, just a vision, if it's only in your head, down. If no one gets to hear it, it's as good as dead. It has to come to life. Angelique, hold all calls, my lady. Bit by bit, put the get together. Rum, 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 rum. Piece by piece, only way to make a work of art. Finished. Hey, I'll be a son of sea cook. Forgot the ribbon. <laughs> Putting it together, small amounts, adding up to make a work of art. Finished. Hey, this is kind of fun. Gotta take it in metro, see what the honchos will say. Good lord, the Santa Anna's really are giving up. Oh, oh. Was that a tremble I felt, sir? Studio head, sir. Is it a go with my question? Oh, good lord, I've been rewritten. All they ever like is repetition. All they ever want is what they know. You do this pig licking sons of Jackie. Who be you? 
I am your father, the late Jackie Rogers Sr. You're my father? I'm your son. Gee, is the Holy Spirit nearby? If it's a tree, you get egg roll. <laughs> Please, let's bring up the lights or do some key. <laughs> You're not making this any easier. Ladies and gentlemen, I must explain, this isn't fair. That line that I threw in about the Holy Spirit cannot be found within the confines of the script. It was a totally spontaneous addition. I have no idea where it came from, you see. But that is what you call improvisation. Jackie, yes, do you want to get your film made? You know I do, Dad. Well, in Hollywood, you've got to learn to compromise your art. With all due respect, Captain, the hell I'll compromise my art. Rogers Jr. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> That's the state of the earth. This is the state of the earth. Gee, you at all, do you understand that? His escrow was due on the 31st. Mark could not solve the condominium. It's not about escrow. Oh, what is it about? It's about Chip. Yes. You're going to bring up Chip. That stupid, stupid story I'm not going to hear about. You know what, Troy? I'm sick of this. I am sick oh, of it. God's sake, Antoninus. <sighs> and Michael, it's Tina. No, I'm fine. No, I got the results back from my doctor. He was wonderful. It is not Epstein's bar. It's like I have some dumb virus, but I felt tired. But I went skiing, and I felt wonderful. Listen, I have good news, and I have bad news, Michael. I'm snacking, and I shouldn't be. Um, Danza is not going to be available. I know he feels bad because he's a big fan of whoopies, but it is just not going to happen, okay? But... I have an interesting suggestion for you. The bald guy from my court. Now, what's his name? Why? Very good. I hope you understand, Mr. Grimley, but at who? There is a dress code and a sport jacket is required. Oh, please, a second thought is not needed, Ranji, for it seems to fit pretty decently, I must say. Very well, then. Let me show you to your table. Oh, that would be fun. Oh, give me a break. They're Cisco and Eber dining together. Mindy Cohen! Give me a break. That is too much. This is a night of dreams, I must say. Thanks for remembering. Here he is, Edward Grimley. <laughs> I love you, you pointy headed bastard. You come on, sit down, sit down. Sure. Yeah, sit right over there. Yeah. Okay. This is Edward Grimley. He's my favorite client. Ed, I want you to meet Joe Weiss. Jay. It's Jay Weiss. Right. Okay. And Phil Chong. Hi, Ed. Nice to meet Jay you. is nice with uh, Governor Products for the way you live. And Phil here represents the marketing division of Tippett and Richardson. Go, guys. Thanks, Ed. Ed, can I call you Eddie? Sure. Ed, 
we uh, have run a lot of ideas up a lot of flagpoles, and I think we've got an idea for you. Jay? Thanks, Phil. Eddie, can I call you Ed? Sure. We've come up with a product that we feel confident can achieve immediate saturation. Phil? Thanks, Jay. This is it. The Ed Grimley. I'm seeing a billboard. Saturday night special. Get ready. Silencer. <laughs> is Silencer. this great? This is great. You see, given Ed the popularity of Saturday Night Live. Very popular. And of Saturday Night Special. <laughs> Very popular, which too. Which this is designed for. Yeah. We thought it would be kind of, what's the word I'm looking for, Phil? Fun. Fun. That's yeah, it. You know, fun. fun. Jesus H. Christ off the cross. That's terrific. <laughs> Thanks, man. Oh, give me a break. Is that date bread? I have not had date nut bread since Uncle Basil's Thanksgiving feast. Oh, why don't I just reach for it without washing my hands? How sickeningly sad is that of me to have done that? I apologize to the table, gentlemen. If you'll excuse me, I best clown. Oh, did you see that? Thank you. I just got hit. I just heard oh, the sound of it. Seems to be okay. No, I just have a sit down. Are you okay, kid? Oh, yes. Never felt rosier. Oh, Mr. Grimley, I'm so sorry. It was a total accident. Who represents you these days, by the way? I represent him. Really? Yes. Phil? Mm -hmm. Oh, I heard he was thinking of leaving. Uh, no, he's not leaving. You're not thinking of leaving, are you, kid? Could you help me up, babe? <coughs> sure, kid. Whatever you want. I'm right. sure. sorry, but when I get to swing, I mean, anything can happen. It's just ridiculous. Oh. But, I mean, you, but it stands the reason. You have to understand what Whoopi's people are trying to do to us. Yeah, I know Whoopi's people. Oh, this is too much. Being an ooh, I couldn't be more excited. Just the thought of it is making me go completely mental, I must say. Here I am mingling with such famous people. People that you would only imagine meeting amidst the private moments of your fantasies, and that's no lie. Gee, I never realized what wee eyes I have. I would definitely have to refer to them as wee. Oh, oh that's bad. Well, perhaps a hand dryer might be the solution to my personal sorrow. Oh, great. Isn't that always the way? Broken. You want something to function properly, and it never... Ah! a break still soaking wet. Obviously toilet tissue is the answer I require. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what do you think of your blind aid, Roger? Not very much. You told me she was a real bombshell. She turned out to be a real dog. I give her a definite thumbs down, Gene. Well, I have to think a woman with a crow magnon jaw can be very dramatic looking. I give her two thumbs up. Well, I think you're giving too many thumbs up these days. You're diminishing the impact of the whole thumb thing. Oh, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You got a comb? No, I don't have a What do you want a comb for? Wishful thinking? Hey, save that stuff for the television show, all right? <laughs> Besides, you're just bitter because I can never find anybody to fix you up with. Not only that, talk about me handing out too many thumbs up. What about you? You gave thumbs up to that wonderful movie, Hot to Trot. Well, at least I didn't embarrass us both by panning the internationally acclaimed Babette's Feast. Great. I wanted a comb. I got a condom. Give me that thing. What are you going to do with that? Nothing. What are you going to do? Nothing. You're not going to poke that blind date of yours with that, are you? How dare you accuse me of that? And even if I did, she'd be a definite two-bagger. Oh, what's that supposed to mean? Well, that means I put an extra bag on my head in case the one on hers falls off. <laughs> <laughs> You're a pig. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Mr. Hot to Trot. Boy, I'll tell you, at least I don't go around giving thumbs up to every piece of schlock just because I want to see my name up there with Mr. Jeffrey Lyons. All right, you've gone too far. Now you take that back. Why, it's true. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. <laughs> see, I told you so. <laughs> All right, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> oh, dry up. He's dead. Oh, no. What did I do? I killed him. Little buddy. Little red cheek, credit buddy. <laughs> Talk to me, little buddy. Did I cave in your little chest? I'm sorry, little critic buddy. 
I liked Bad Bad Seas. I, I really did. I, I, that was not his money. <laughs> Fingerprints. I gotta get rid of the fingerprints. Oh, oh dear. Who's in there? I said who's in there? Sir. You saw everything, didn't you? No, no, I, I didn't see anything. Why? Did someone's chest cave in? Oh. All right. This is it, Grimley. You're gonna die. No, no, please, sir, don't do it. Don't do what you feel you must do. Someone will hear the gunshot. And they'll know it was you, Mustang. Oh, no. No, they won't. Not with this, they won't. No. No! No! No what? You're not okay or you're not looking for representation? I, I... No, he's not looking for representation, sweetie. Eddie, you okay? Uh, we just stopped by. We heard the little guy took a nasty bump on the head. Oh, I just, I just had the, the most frightening dream ever. Give me a break. Because, like, I dreamt, Mr. Cisco, that you were about to shoot me with the Egg Grimley silencer. <laughs> but it made me realize, babe, it is babe, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I was pretty sure of. It made me realize, babe, that if we're to merchandise my own persona, it must be done with a certain amount of integrity, you know? Oh, and I suppose something like the Wheel of Fortune home game isn't merchandising at its very best. What? You want to do a game? We can do a game. Who said we could do a game, huh? Oh, well, then Joy is my new middle name. Maestro, one more time. Most people, I find, are lucky if they have one major cathartic experience in a lifetime. I, myself, have been very fortunate in that I've had between, I don't know, four and eight, uh, but I only deal with three. Uh, the first was when I recently met Roseanne Barr and found out that she wasn't particularly overweight at all. She'd just been badly lit. The second was when I met Richard Burton about 10 years ago. And uh, I was very excited about it, you know, because he was an idol. And this was backstage at Camelot. And I, I, I planned exactly what I was going to say to him. And when he came up to me, I shook his hand and I said, Mr. Burton, I, I just want to tell you, I think that you're a brilliant actor and that your performance tonight was astounding. And, and what a pleasure it is to shake your hand. And I thought that he would then say thank you and move on to the next person. But he didn't. He, he, he actually talked to me like a real person. He said, well, did you not find that there was an element of reverb coming from the back speaker? Did that not bother you at all? And I looked at him and I said, thank you. Now, I, I know that what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, that isn't a particularly cathartic experience. But I'll then say to you that I never actually met Richard Burton that night. I met Shirley MacLaine. But you see, I don't do Shirley MacLaine. So... And the third uh, happened to me a week ago. I just finished my special, and I decided to have a party at my home and screen the show for my new Hollywood friends. And that was certainly very cathartic. <laughs> it's funny. Um... When you write and perform your own special, you, 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 you live with this uncertainty that, that your friends, that mean so much to you, are going to like it. But judging from your faces tonight, I couldn't be on a bigger high. <laughs> you 
you know, uh, so many people ask me, where did... Okay, dim sum and apple jack, anyone? It was very ambitious. And therein lies your problem. You seem to veer when you should be going straight. And then there were times when I would kill for a curve and you're on cruise control on Route 66. And I really wanted to like it more. I liked you. So I assume you have psychiatric help. But if you're ever considering a change, looking for new psychiatric representation, I've done a lot of work with your people. I've made great strides with show business types. Please feel free to call me any weekday, Monday to Friday, 1 to 4 o'clock. My number is 555-TALK. If you're calling from the Valley, it is 818-555-TALK. Of course, you have great respect for planning confidentiality, but if you've got a few minutes, I could tell you stories that'll curl your hair. Do you know how good you are? She really, I mean, I know you know you're good, but do you really, really know how good Night! Everybody has fun, Marty? They seem to like your show. Yes, it seemed to go pretty well. I'm very happy. <laughs> Marty? Marty, are you all right? Take a breath, Marty! <laughs> they hated it, Bobby! Oh, some of them did, y'all, but some of them liked it. But not all of them liked it, but a good half of them did. God, I wish you read more. It works differently in Hollywood. Your work has to be accepted by everybody. By Fred Grandy. <laughs> That's the name of the guy I was going to remember from before. Oh, from Lumbo. Lumbo. Fred Grandy. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, your work has to be accepted by everybody. By every test group or it ain't going to fly, lady. What has happened to you, Marty? It used to matter only what you thought. You and you alone were the barometer of whether your work was success or not. Now you've changed. You've gone Hollywood. At least I'm not the one who got her inner thighs liposuctioned. Oh. How oh, very European of you. Oh. <coughs> Whatever the hell country you're from. <gasps> being ironic, Nancy May. We're not funny at all. Oh, okay. And I mean, it's true. All they do in Hollywood is give out awards. Which Woody Allen film was it that he said that in? September. No, 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 it wasn't September. Uh, Another no, Woman. No, 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 it's one of his comedies. Interiors. His comedies, Nancy May. What's that? That's the baby. The baby. I'm a baby, Marty. Oh, yes, of course, I'm a baby. See, see, that's typical of Hollywood. It makes you forget that you have a baby. Are you coming up? No, no, no. I'll be up in a few seconds. You, you, you go up and take care of baby. I see. I want to say Bill. Leroy. Leroy. <laughs> up you go. Hey, Marty. Over here, kid. Who are you? An ace award. You mean the award they give out for outstanding achievement in cable excellence? Oh, yeah. <sighs> oh, I've wanted you for so long. That's not what you said a couple of minutes ago. Well, I was just saying that for her sake. I didn't believe a word of it. I didn't. Come on, baby. Come to Papa. Not so fast, Buster. You haven't won me yet. But who knows? Maybe someday. 
someday I'll be on your mantle someday Someday, someday They'll call out your name Oh boy And you'll run up with speed and grace Number one in the cable race Someday, someday Thank you everyone for sharing with me this celebration of Hollywood. And remember, if you must drive home, please try to carpool. Good night, and God bless you. Someday. Oh, and one other thing. I'm afraid I have a confession to make. I've never really met Woody Allen. I just made that up for dramatic effect. But I have been to New York City, though, and boy, is that a town. But that's a whole nother special.